Hello and welcome everyone. We are so happy to have you with us for our Wednesday Hour of Power service. Let's give the Lord a praise. Those of us that are here are excited to be here. And of course, we're excited to be with you on the other side of these cameras. And I want to give just a personal, virtual hug to all of the Faith City family right now here. And those that are watching, my goodness, we miss so many of you so much. We're looking forward to that day, whenever that's going to come, and I'm praying it'll be soon. We'll be able to get together once again. But we're together like this right now, and in I would like to call your cyber sanctuary in the hour of power, Jesus is in the space where you are. I really believe to the Faith City family, our new friends, and anyone who's watching, God had this lined up in advance. And whatever you need, I'm glad to tell you that God is in the miracle working business. He can do what no other power can do. I want to encourage you to get your prayer request in. As you know, that we're always praying for the needs of people. And I would like to report to you that we are nearly, I would say, a 50% increase on our praise reports. People that are getting back with us saying, I'm so glad I got my prayer request in. I'm so glad that I put action on my faith because I say it all the time. Faith with your action causes a reaction from God. You might want to get your prayer request in right now. We'll be praying in just a few minutes. You can do it so easily. If you're watching on Facebook, it's Faith City Family Church Facebook, the send message or the comment section. Either one's fine. And on YouTube, the chat section. I'm looking over here, and our prayer ministry team is watching their screens right now, and they're ready to take your prayer request. What do you need from the Lord? Let's take this hour and agree together. It is going to be your hour of power. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we stretch forth our hands. Here in the church, I invite those in the church to stand with me, those listening out in the parking lot, in the driving church, and, of course, the many that are watching, we agree in prayer that this hour will be a significant investment of your time. And whatever you need in your life, that God will show himself strong. It will be not only an hour of healing and deliverance and miracles, but an hour of empowerment and encouragement. So be blessed in the name of Jesus. We touch and agree right now. And everybody said, no matter where we're in this together, shout, Amen. Amen. You ready to clap your hands? You ready to make a joyful noise? We're so glad to have back with us Monet Guthrie Shelton to lead us in worship. Put your hands together. Give her a big welcome. We missed her. Let's have a great time. Praise the Lord, everybody. We came tonight to rejoice. We came tonight to celebrate our great and mighty God. Can we do that together? We're going to praise our God. Let's put our hands together like this. And I know you know it. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Forever we will sing. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Our great and matchless King. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Forever we will sing. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Our great and matchless King. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Oh, yeah.
a great God. He's great and mighty. His love is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. He's worthy. And we love him tonight. That's why you came out tonight. Because our God is amazing. He's fantastic. Any word that you can think of that will magnify the name of the Lord. Put it on your lips and give him some glory. Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust. See the Lord.
And we believe it. Hallelujah. Amen, Thank Monet. Lord. What a song. The perfect song for so many people watching right now, so many people listening right now, that he is the everlasting God. And he is the alpha, he is the omega, he is the beginning, he is the end. He's, he's going to get you through all of the seasons of what you're going through. And we're getting ready to pray. If you'd like to get your prayer request in, you can still do so. Faith City Family Church, Facebook, Sin Message, the comment section, or if you're watching on YouTube, the chat section. I want to ask Brother Harmon if he would come at this time and bring our prayer ministry request box and any requests that have come in thus far. We're going to agree together in prayer that God, wherever you're at, is going to come into your space and he's going to work. He's going to deliver in the name of Jesus and he is going to move that mountain. Thank you, Brother Harmon. I appreciate it so much. This says, pray for the Tatum and Joseph families for comfort and support of the passing of Johnny Tatum. If you are, are watching, we send our love, our prayers, and our condolences to you in the passing of Johnny. We want to pray for Andrea Brown for healing and housing and salvation. Leroy Edmonds, please pray for my son, Elijah Emmons, that we will. Valerie Williams, please pray for my granddaughter, Taylor Butler, and all other college-bound students for Jesus' protection to cover them with his blood. Amen. Yes, Lord. Lawrence Minor said, please pray for the Minor, the Harris, and the Walker families, that we will. Get your prayer request in to us. Faith City Family Church Facebook, send message, comment, YouTube, the chat section. Kimberly Robertson, thank you, Brother Harmon. Kim Kimberly Robertson, pray for my son Corey's third COVID-19 test. Pray that it will be negative. In the name of Jesus, we believe that it will. Amen. Clifton Wright says, please pray for me and my other family members that you, uh, that the Lord will keep us healthy and strong and in one accord. Yes, this says, this is an unspoken request. I don't want to put my name on it, they say, but please pray for overflowing abundance of blessing for Reach Gospel Radio and Faith City Family Church. We say amen and we receive that blessing in the name of Jesus. Kathy Lee says, my 10-year-old Shania was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Shania is one of our kids that rode the bus. But God and prayer, together we believe she is only uh, she is only she's only going to be delivered amen and set free in the name of Jesus somebody give a praise the Lord for that faith just a, two or three more here thus far Lewis Johnson please pray for my daughter Monica who has to go to Will's Eye Hospital in Philadelphia to have a biopsy done on her eyes yes that we will Andrea Williams Chavis please pray for broken generate for generational curses to be broken through andrea tyrone amoy amari asher dora G agree with me for my family and marriage to be covered by the blood of jesus and this says pray for me the doctors think i could have a cyst on my womb but she is believing for a miracle Amen, amen. Brother Harmon, if you'd like to come, and we're going to begin to pray. And we're getting out the oil. We're going to pray for every one of these, those that are in the sanctuary, those listening, those watching. Let's stretch our hands out together to every one of these requests. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, we pray for Brother Lewis Johnson, uh, Lord, that his desire will come to pass, that 
daughter Monica who is going to Will's Eye Hospital. The biopsy will come back negative and she will get a good report. Uh, we pray for overflowing abundance, Lord, as this dear soul set for Reach Gospel Radio and Faith City Family Church. Lord, we are praying for the uh, Tatum and Joseph family. You will comfort them in the passing uh, of Johnny Tatum uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we're praying for Andrea Brown for healing, housing, uh, and salvation uh, in Jesus' name. Brother Leroy, we pray for your son Elijah that God will do the work that needs to happen in his life. And Valerie, we are praying for your granddaughter Taylor and all the other college-bound students for Jesus' protection. And they will be covered in the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Lawrence, we pray for minor Harrison Walker families. Uh, we bind the devil in the name of Jesus. Whatever needs to be done uh, will be done. Uh, and Kathy, we pray for your 10-year-old ten ten -old Shania uh, diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. It's not too hard for the master. We pray that she would be healed in the name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, and we give you praise for him. Kimberly, we are praying for your son Corey's third COVID-19 test that it will come back negative in Jesus name and Clifton we pray for all the family members in your family that you will be healthy and you will be on one accord in the name of Jesus Lord I stretch my hands out to those in the church I stretch my hands out to those that are watching and we pray that the miracle power of Jesus would be released in your situation that the Lord would come into that space where you are and touch you and heal you right now. Wherever you are, raise your hand and praise the Lord with me. Just fill the atmosphere with praise. Watching at home, wherever you're seeing this, fill it up with praise right now. Lord, we thank you that you're working all things together for our good in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. And Lord, Andrea said she needs Andrea Tyrone Amor Amari Asher and Dora to be delivered God we believe for deliverance over them and the marriage will be covered by the blood in the name of Jesus did you ever hear somebody say this saying it touched me today when I saw it the saying is this those who walk with God always reach their destination those who walk with God always reach their destination. I want to take a moment to ask you, are you walking with God? Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? It's only a prayer away. The Bible said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And we want to give you an opportunity. And anybody here at church, those that are joining in watching right now the opportunity to have Jesus be the Lord of your life so that you can have that close relationship with him those who walk with God always reach their destination as always I turn to the cross that we have placed on the church platform reminding us that Jesus died for all of our sins and he said that he is the way the truth and the life and he said whoever calls on me shall be saved I want to invite everyone in church everyone watching and listening let us pray this prayer together and let us make sure that we have that relationship with God sister Monet repeated with me to encourage others everybody together say it loudly come on repeat after me say thank you Jesus, thank you, Jesus. for dying on the cross for all of my sins I want to reach my destination so I'm gonna walk with you I confess all my sin I'm not perfect and I need your forgiveness wash me with your blood right now I receive you as my Lord and Savior thank you for saving me now in Jesus name Amen. 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 How about a praise the Lord? How about a thank you, Jesus? Isn't it wonderful to think that someone has given their heart 
to Jesus Christ. We give God the praise. Those of you in service with us, you may be seated. Those of you watching, welcome, welcome. We love you all so very much. I want to say, say Sister Monet, thank you so much for leading us in worship. Thank you, music ministry as well. Let's give a praise the Lord. Praise the Lord to our prayer ministry volunteers that are watching their screens, ready to take your prayer request. Faith City Family Church, Facebook, send message or comment the YouTube, the chat section as we believe with you for miracles. We're coming to that point of the service where we get that opportunity to be able to promote and to get the work of the gospel out there in our community by giving of our tithes and offerings. I just want to say this, that we are so grateful to everyone who gives their tithes, who gives their offerings, so that we may continue the summer of Salvation Outreach Initiative. It has been thus far an amazing journey as we have taken the message of the cross to areas that so desperately need the gospel message of Jesus Christ. We set that cross up in areas where a matter of 15 or 20 yards away, drugs were going down, being dealt, money was being exchanged, cars were driving up, all kinds of crazy activities were going on, but yet we were there in the middle lifting up the name of Jesus and people giving their lives to Christ. That only happens because of people giving, people just like you. And I want to ask you, would you be willing to be generous? We're in the middle, of course, the summertime, and that can be a challenging time for the ministry. And I would like to ask everyone in church tonight, everyone who is watching us, wherever you're watching, those under the sound of my voice, would you do your very best for the work of the gospel? We really do need your help. I always share the verse on tithing, Malachi chapter 3, beginning with verse number 10, because tithing is the first and foremost thing that God encourages us to do, giving the 10% of the money that he blesses us with. And that scripture faithfully reads, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. We always remind ourselves of the three blessings under the covenant of tithing. When you tithe, God said, number one, I'm going to pour you out a blessing and there will not be room enough to receive it then he goes from there and he says uh, when he's saying not room enough he's talking about I'd like to give you more than you gave because how many know that God is in the blessing business can I hear an amen he really is he's in the blessing business and thirdly he said I will rebuke the devourer for your sake he said, I'm going to give you protection when you give your tithes. And so I'd like to add our Proverbs chapter 11 verse because we've been asking throughout the summer for outreach offerings. Proverbs chapter 11 verse number 25, a generous person, it says, they will prosper. One that says, Lord, I, I want to bless the work of God. I want to bless others. And whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. You want to be blessed? Help us bless those in need. It's very easy and secure to give here to the ministries of Faith City Family Church. I'd like to share those with you right now. If I could, just very, very easy to do. Here are our giving options. Our text to give, simply call that number and it will take you to a link. You could text that number however you'd like to do it. Very, very simple. The link is secure. Very simple to give your tithes and offerings. You can also use the Cash App as well. 
We always remind people to use that dollar sign, Faith City FC2, lower or uppercase, doesn't matter, but you must have the dollar sign. And then faithcitynow.com, another great resource there, an easy way to be able to give. And if you'd like to send your giving right to the door of the church, you can do it to Faith City Family Church. Send it 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. That's 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. And I'm going to pray because we, well, I, I, I was always trained, look, keep it real, be authentic, don't play games, keep it 100. We could really use a blessing. And so whatever you could do to help us throughout this summer, we are grateful. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for those that are here. Lord, thank you for the wonderful church family on the other side of the cameras right now, the friends, the new friends that we've made. We're all God's family together worshiping right now. And Lord, together we make a difference. Together we take the message of the cross outside the walls of the church. And Lord, I pray that people will feel, Lord, the sincerity of what we're asking for tonight, that everyone watching, listening would say, Pastor, I feel what you're saying. Let me make sure I get my tithe. And you know what? I'm enclosing a generous offering. I know that summer can be a very challenging time. I'm stepping up because I know that God will bless me for being a blessing. Lord, give us that blessing, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'll be back in just a moment. Thank you. God bless you. Once again, we want to say thank you so very much for being a part of the Hour of Power. Thank you for your giving, your support. It's making an eternal difference in the lives of so many other people. We want to remind you that there are various ways that we can worship together. The church is open. You can worship with us Sundays in person right here at Faith City Family Church opposite the Christiana Mall in Newark, Delaware, Sundays 9, 11, Wednesdays at 7. If you're more suited to have church online, Facebook or YouTube, and also you can sit in the parking lot of the church and listen live over 97.7 FM in the parking lot as others do, providing various options for us to continue to worship together. Stay encouraged with the best in gospel music. Oh, so many people, they're saying, I thank God that 24-7 I can turn on my radio. I can download my app and be encouraged with the best in gospel music. Reach Gospel Radio for an FM signal nearest you. Go to reachgospelradio.com. You can download the free app 
at uh, the Google Play, App Store, Apple Android device, and it will be a blessing in your life. Well, I've got a message that I believe it's going to be right on time. I know that God put this on my heart, but I want to say a shout out to all of our musicians and also our music director, Brother Dana Saray. Let's give a praise to the Lord. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Pressing on, pressing on, pressing on together. That's how we do it. And the prayer ministry team, they're ready to go. You might say, can I, I just thought of a prayer request. Can I get that in while you're teaching and preaching the word? You sure, sure can. Faith City Family Church Facebook, the send message or comment, YouTube, the chat section. And they'll be watching their screens for any other prayer request. The message that I really feel strongly to share for this hour of power is this. Power principles to experience the favor of God. Power principles to experience the favor of God. If there ever was a time, if there ever was a season that we need to experience the favor of God, it is right now. And I believe that the greater the attack, the greater the intensity, the greater the battle, the bigger the mountain, the greater the favor of God can come. How many by the shouting of an amen could say that God has given you favor over the many years of your life? You can look back and say, that had to be God's favor. How did I get through that? That must have been the favor of God. And listen, the same God who gave you favor before is the same God who's going to give you favor once again. I've got five power principles that I want to share, beginning with power principle number one. It's how. You handle your situation that is your key to your greatest season. It's how you handle your situation that is your key to your greatest season. I have a question. How do you handle trouble when it comes? We go to the book of Psalm, chapter 34, verse 17 through 19, and we literally read some instructions of what we need to do when trouble enters our life, when an attack enters our life. It is literally a heavenly prescription, and it says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The next verse says, the Lord is nigh. He is close unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite or humble spirit. The next verse reads, many are the afflictions, the challenges, the problems, the mountains, the battles. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth us out of them all is there an amen from someone right now the righteous cry the lord hears he's nigh to the brokenhearted the afflictions might be many but the lord will deliver you out of them all come somebody ought to raise up your hand and say the lord is delivering me out of them all amen he's working on it right now now, my question is, who is the first person you reach out to when you're going through a struggle? There's nothing wrong with family, nothing wrong with friends, but I would say the greatest friend is what a friend we have in Jesus. That first verse said, the righteous cry and the Lord hear it. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Principle number one, it's how you handle your situation that is your key to your greatest season. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 is another verse that tells us how we ought to handle trouble when it comes our way. It says, when trouble comes, let us not be weary in well-doing. In other words, when I'm under attack, one of the greatest things I should be doing is trying to be a blessing to someone else, to get my focus off my own pain and my own struggle. 
Let us not be weary in well-doing, because if we'll keep doing the right thing in due season, we will reap if we faint not. This makes me want to shout to think if I'll just keep one foot in front of another, if I'll keep walking by faith and not by sight, if I'll keep my hand to the plow and I won't look back, uh, and I'll stay faithful to God, my reaping time is coming. Uh, your blessing time is coming. Uh, you may not know when and you may not know how, but I I know it is coming and it is on the way. Can somebody give a praise to the Lord right now? Our message, power principles to experience the favor of God. Power principle number two says exercise your faith and believe for an unusual once in a lifetime miracle. Ex Exercise your faith. I want to keep this up on the screen here. I want you to contemplate that thought right now. Faith is kind of like a muscle. Your faith gets stronger the more that you use it. And how many know the more you use it, the more it will develop. When you first got saved, maybe all you could believe God for was a, 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 a miracle of that size. But as you kept your faith and you kept your faithfulness, now you're believing for bigger things. You're doing greater things because faith is something that needs to be exercised. Amen. That's when you, why when you get in your prayer request, you really are exercising your faith. You're saying, I believe that if, other, if others pray, the sisters that were over here, that if they get my prayer request and the pastor prays, a miracle can happen. You can get that prayer request in Faith City Family Church Facebook, the comment or the send message, YouTube, the chat. But look at the rest of this on the screen. Exercise your faith and believe for note an unusual once-in-a-lifetime miracle. How many believe God is so amazing he can do something that will blow your mind? Now, I want to take us in the Old Testament, and let's look at an example how God did a once-in-a-lifetime miracle because a mere man was in a jam. He was up the creek, and his paddles were going. And the story reads, Then spake Joshua to the Lord, in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. This is a man talking up to the sun in the sky. And thou moon in the valley of Agilon. It goes on to read, And the sun stood still, and the moon did stay still until the people had avenged themselves, won the battle against their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasher that the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day? Verse 14 reads, And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened to the voice of a what? Of a? A mere man, for the Lord fought for Israel. And you might say, well, I'm just a mere man. I'm just a mere woman. No, you are a child of the Most High God. And I'm supposed to encourage you, I feel in my spirit, to believe for bigger, to believe for greater. Look at all the good things God has done in the past. I could listen. I, over this microphone, could give testimonies. I've seen God do some great things in ministry over the years. I've seen us set goals and exceed the goals. Did you hear what I said? I prayed, God, I pray for this radio station, and we wouldn't get one, we get two of them. God is an able God, but you've got to keep exercising your faith. And I want you to believe for a miracle so unusual, and I want to put out a challenge this week. I want you to believe for the biggest thing you've ever believed in in your life. I want you to repeat this after me right now. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. You love me as much as you love Joshua. This week, I'm believing for the biggest miracles I've ever believed for in my life. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a praise right now. Our message, power principles to experience the favor of God. Principle number three, possess and maintain. Boy, those are two powerful words just in themselves possess and maintain a grateful 
heart. Do something called gratitude practice. It is a known fact that a grateful heart is even a healthier heart. You might, might have heard me share before the world-renowned surgeon who has, has done, I think, five to 700 open-heart surgeries, uh, whether it was an open-heart surgery or a heart transplant, world-renowned, and he happens to be a born-again Christian. He said, I have been doing for decades open-heart surgeries. He said, I can tell you right now, a grateful heart is a more healthy heart. How many believe when you sit around thinking about your blessings instead of just thinking about all your problems, it's going to help your health. It's going to help your blood pressure. It's going to help your stress level. Now, I'm not asking you to live in denial. I'm not asking you to say, I don't have any problems. I'm not asking you to say, I don't need to deal with certain things, but I am asking you to balance out your life and put more attention on the blessings that God has given you instead of all of the problems the devil's trying to give you. And I promise you, if you will have a grateful heart, it will change how you feel. It will change how you think. And let me add another dimension. It will even change people around you because how many know you change the atmosphere so many times? And so possess and maintain a grateful heart. Do what we are asking you to do Gratitude practice in Psalm 34, verse 8, it reads, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is what? You can shout it. He is what? Somebody shout, God is good. Now, how many believe it would be good to say that 10 times a day, that God is good? And maybe you get bad news on the phone. You still want to, you know, well, God is good. And, and you maybe something, this didn't go right, but God is still good. Amen. All the time. And he's working it out. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that what? Trusted in him. How many believe that everything's going to be all right? Do you honestly believe that? Can somebody shout, I believe everything's going to be all right? You can't say that and mean it unless you trust in Almighty God. But how many could say God has gotten you through enough things in your life uh, that you could trust him before and you can trust him right now? Amen. He's a God who can be trusted. It says in verse 9, Psalm 34, O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Well, part of fearing God is being thankful to God. And the more thanks that goes up, you heard it said for years, when the praises go up, the blessings fall down. Increase your praise and your thankfulness and watch what God will do. Our message is power principles to experience the favor of God. Principle number four of five. Remember, God sees you as his masterpiece. This could be for somebody one of the most important power principles that we are sharing right now. You see, how you see yourself has a lot to do with how you'll be treated by other people. If you don't respect your own self, many times people won't even respect you. And if you will get up every day and make declarations of, I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. I'm a masterpiece. God knew me when I was formed in the womb of my own mother. He knows how many hairs are on my head. He has a plan for me and a destiny for me. When you begin to think like that, you're going to not only experience the favor of God, but let me tell you, you're going to be drawn to people who are going to give you favor. Come on. How many know that there's something called the law of attraction? Sometimes a liar will attract another liar. Come on, a thief will attract a thief. But somebody who sees themselves and value themselves, they're going to be taken into situations and atmospheres of opportunity because you're walking around with a vibe in your life that I know who I am. I am a child of the Most High God. Now, I want you to make sure you remember this verse, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, and, and, and let's say it together. Ready? For we are his what? 
masterpiece. Let's read it once again. For we are his masterpiece. It doesn't matter what somebody called you. It doesn't matter how you were raised. Maybe you were in a very uh, an, an abusive home or an abusive upbringing, and you were told you were everything but positive. But I'm here to tell you, you are what the Lord says you are. And in the name of Jesus, I pray the Lord will deliver you from anything negative that's been spoken over your life. You are a masterpiece, and the rest of your life, I declare, will be the best of your life uh, because the Lord is for you. And if God be for you, who can be against you? How about an amen right now? And then our final principle, principle number five. But before I actually read that and go to that, I want to review the other principles, power principles to experience the favor of God. Principle number one, how you handle your situation. How, it's how you handle your situation that is your key to your greatest season. Principle number two, exercise your faith and believe for unusual once-in-a-lifetime miracles. Principle number three, possess and maintain a grateful heart. Do something called gratitude practice. Principle number four, remember God sees you as his masterpiece. And our final principle, principle number five as our musicians come is realize God made you with everything that you need. Did you hear that? that that's enough to make somebody want to shout. Now, I know you might be in a situation, we might be in a situation where there are certain things that we may need. I know a few minutes ago I made an appeal for financial support. We are in need of financial support. But you know what? God has everything we need. He knows how to get it to you through somebody, through an opportunity. God has everything that you need. But get this, when you were made, God made you with everything you needed. You might say, well, help me understand that, Pastor. Here, and let me read to you James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Now, you know, when you were born, you were a gift, you were a present. Did you hear that? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. When God made you, he deposited in your life everything that you need to walk with him every day. Somebody said, well, uh, uh, what do I have? You have the, one of the greatest gifts. You have the gift of faith. The Bible said that every man and woman is given the measure of faith. You don't have to have a lot of faith. It says in the Bible, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to the mountains in your life, be removed and be cast into the sea, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. You have everything that you need. You have a mind. You have a brain. You've got strength. You've got health. Whatever he's given you, work with what you've got. But you've got everything that you need, and what you feel you might be lacking in, God knows how to make up the difference. Can we give the Lord a praise right now? Our message, power principles to experience the favor of God. I have a question before we let you go. Do you need the favor of God? What area is it that you need the favor of God in your life? I've got some good news. God specializes in customizing favor. Someone over here, someone watching might need favor in the finances. Somebody may need favor regarding a relationship. Somebody might need favor regarding a career path or education. But God can give you favor. And I want to pray with you and pray over you that God will do just that. Would you stretch your hands out? Let's pray for one another. You mean, Pastor, you would like for me to pray for you too? Yes, because I need the favor of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone watching, listening, that you would pour down your supernatural 
favor. I pray that you would, as we say so many times here, you would open up doors that no man could ever shut. God, that you would put that application on the right desk with the right person in the right department, that you, God, would just set things in motion in your way. We pray for your favor, favor with God and with man. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Before we let you go, Brother Harmon is seeing if there might be any other prayer needs, prayer requests that have come in. And we will be happy to pray. Thank you, Brother Harmon, before we give our benediction. Kathy, Kathy Lee, I need prayer for strength. Thank you, Brother Harmon. Diwana. I was furloughed in April and then laid off in June. She's giving God praise for something that happened. She said, I'm glad to report that God has blessed me with a job starting this Monday. My salary request was more than the company wanted to pay, but God took care of the situation. God is able. Look at that favor and will take care of his children. Let's give God a shout for that. My goodness, Lord, we thank you. Favor, favor. Kenyatta, please pray for me to get my license and a financial blessing for everyone. Key says pray for healing. The Taylor family, pray for Granville Taylor, who was in the hospital. The family asked for healing his body. Keep his wife, Juanita and his children in prayer yes we will sister pam amen uh, jeanette i submitted a prayer request a couple of weeks ago for brother jay flamer i remember that who was on life support but is now listen to this he is now awake out of life support and in rehab isn't god good yes he is uh, it says uh, to pray for ebony watson and uh, admus davis for the loss of their grandmother, oh Lord, yes. Uh, and uh, we also uh, pray for Steve Longshore. He will be having back surgery at the end of August. We pray for his total healing. Shall we all stand in the congregation and we're going to pray for these requests, going to pray for you. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord, we want to thank you for how you're doing miracles, uh, for Jeanette's praise report, uh, for Joanna Allen's praise report, for Vicky's praise report, saying thank you for the healing prayers for my knee replacement. I have 97% flexibility and 100% extension already. I hope to be back in the sanctuary in a few weeks. Uh, oh, hallelujah. God is able. And so, Lord, we pray over Kathy Kenyatta for key, oh God, and for the Taylor family and, and for Ebony and Jeanette and Clifton and Kimberly and Kathy, oh God, and all of the requests that have come in, Lawrence and Leroy and God, just so many. We give you praise. Uh, we give you praise. Uh, and I speak over you that the Lord is going to do something uh, that is going to be so amazing. You're going to have a testimony that even those that don't even believe in God are going to have to say, you know what? There must have been a God. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. I, I want to close out inviting you to join us this Sunday, whether at 9 or 11. And I want you to, this Sunday, to see what one hour in the presence of God can do for your life and your family. Thank you for being with us. Let's put our hands together. Give God a praise right now. Praise the Lord. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Amen.